Hi and welcome to module 1. In this lecture we will have a look at what Waffle is and where we can place it in the cluster environment. We will also have a look at how a node is split up into three different levels through which the data will pass before it finally ends up in a volume on disk. So we will see what happens when data enters a node before it's picked up by Waffle. After that we will explore the data module that takes care of acknowledging the client and finally writing the data to the volume. Now Waffle is often referred to as a file system that NetApp uses in ONTAP. This is not untrue, however, Waffle is more than just a file system. Actually, it would be more appropriate to say that Waffle is a disk management tool that also has a file system on board. So the management of disks, aggregates, RAID groups and VRAM is all part of the Waffle environment. Waffle is not one of a kind. There are other examples of disk management tools with a file system. I'd like to mention two of them, ZFS and B3FS or ButterFS. ZFS was initiated by Sun Microsystems and B3FS was originated by Oracle for Linux environments. I would love to state that Waffle is the best, but that would be just my opinion. What I can say is that Waffle is the oldest and maybe the most evolved and proven environment. But again, I am not the judge of that. Now before we can dig into Waffle, we have to place it in the architecture that makes up an ONTAP cluster. A node in a cluster is logically divided into three parts. This is done with the use of software modules that all have their own function. First there's the top layer that is formed by the network module and the SCSI module. When client data enters a node, that data can either be NAS data or SAN data. If it's NAS data, then it will be processed by the network module. If it's SAN data, then it will be received by the SCSI module. The next step is that it's copied to the cluster session manager. This is the module that checks where the volume is to which the data should be written. It's important to realize that the session manager functions at the cluster level. This means that all session managers in a cluster will have the same information. So the session manager knows whether a block of data is meant to go to a volume on the local node or to a volume that is hosted by another node in the cluster. The configuration information that is managed by the session manager is kept in sync in the cluster via the cluster interconnect. So the data that enters the node may be sent out again to another node based on the location of the volume that the data has to be written to. If the data is sent to another node, that's also done via the cluster interconnect. So all of this time, Waffle is unaware of the data, because it first has to be determined for which node the data is actually meant. So client data enters the node, is then copied to the cluster session manager. The cluster session manager determines the location of the volume. In this case, the volume is local to the node, so the data is copied to the local data module. Again, client data enters the node, uh, is copied to the cluster session manager, but now the volume is hosted by a different node in the cluster. So the cluster session manager determines that the data should not be stored to a volume hosted by the local node, so it sends the data via the cluster interconnect to the correct node. The data is then copied to the data module in that node. Now let's have a look at the data module. Once the data has entered the data module of a node, it's not going to go anywhere else than to a volume that's hosted by that particular node. Before that, the data will be processed by Waffle in the data module of that node. This is about NVRAM storage efficiency and the final creation of what we call a consistency point during which all data of a single write will be written to disk. Don't worry, storage efficiency as well as the creation of a consistency point and how that exactly takes effect will be dealt with in another module. And at the end of this section we'll also have a little demo. So when data enters the data module, it is instantaneously copied to NVRAM. If it concerns a single node cluster, the client will be acknowledged the minute it is in NVRAM. Since NVRAM is battery backed, the data will survive a node reset so it can be safely acknowledged to the client that the data is written, even though it's not on disk yet. 
If the node is part of a multi-node cluster, then the data will be copied to the partner's MVRAM via the HA interconnect before being acknowledged to the client. After the data has been copied to NVRAM, there are two options. If storage efficiency is enabled, then the data will be processed for compression, deduplication and compaction. These are terms that we will deal with later, but probably or most likely you're already familiar with them. Uh, also, you can have a mixture of those, right? So you could enable um, deduplication and not compression. Uh, you can enable or disable compaction. Um, so you can have a mixture of these different techniques, depending on what you want. Finally, the data will be written to the volume by means of a consistency point. Again, we will look at efficiency and consistency points later on. So data enters the data module, is copied to NVRAM, and acknowledged to the client. Then it is either processed by storage efficiency or not, and finally the data has to be written to disk. Now it's very important to realize that Waffle uses four kilobyte blocks to write to disk. As you probably know, the volume is part of an aggregate. The aggregate is a collection of RAID groups that have a parity type. Parity may be RAID 4, RAID DP, which is dual parity, that means two parity disks, or RAID Tech, which is three parity drives. So it's either single, dual, or triple parity. In this example, we see a RAID group of only seven disks, two of which are parity drives. This is a very unlikely setup, but it's just to demonstrate the flow of data. So this is not an actual setup. You will not, you will not run into this in real life. When the consistency point is at hand, then Waffle will first create a stripe, which is called a Tetris block. Then the Tetris block is copied down to the RAID manager. That will create the parity blocks and add them to the Tetris block. And finally, the stripe will be written to the RAID groups in a transaction to complete the consistency point. After that, so after the consistency point is complete, and VRAM can be flushed. And the procedure will repeat itself all the time. So it's interesting to check when this happens. There are a number of reasons for that. And we will have a look at that in the demo as well. But first let's have a look at the possible reasons for a consistency point to take place. So sooner or later the data will have to be copied from memory to disk before NVRAM can be flushed. First there's time. By default, Waffle checks every 10 seconds whether data can be written to disk. If your system is not very busy, that may very well be the case. So every 10 seconds or so, there will be a consistency point which is based on time, if there is data to be written. If your system does have uh, a bit of load, then there are other reasons for generating a consistency point. For example, if memory buffers reach a certain threshold, this is called a high watermark, and that will generate a consistency point as well. The creation of a snapshot will also generate a consistency point. This is important because when the data has been acknowledged to the client, the data is still only in a memory and in NVRAM. Now, creating a snapshot should reflect the client's view, so a consistency point should take care of that. Another reason is when your NVRAM is full or half full, I should say. This is not bad because during the writing of a consistency point, the other half of NVRAM will be used to copy the data from memory to NVRAM so that it can keep acknowledging the client. Related to a half full NVRAM is the number of entries. In NVRAM, indexes are kept for different items like volumes. If the threshold for the maximum number of entries is passed, that does not mean that NVRAM is half full, but still a consistency point will be generated. And there may be other reasons. We'll have a look at some of those in a second, but uh, there are multiple reasons why you can get consistency point. The bad thing is when both of the NVRAM halves are filled up during the writing of a consistency point. So that means that NVRAM is completely full. And from that moment on, your clients cannot be acknowledged. So they will have to wait. So you will have performance loss because NVRAM can only be flushed after the consistency point is complete. So the minute the first consistency point is complete, the second will start. This is called a back-to-back -back consistency point, or a back-to-back -back CP.
and these are not good for performance. A colon in the output would mean that a consistency point that started since the last interval is still not yet finished. And a hash mark says that the consistency point that is running right now is still not finished and the other half of MVRAM is full. So the next CP will be a back-to-back -back CP. Again, back-to-back -back CPs are not good. So for now, just keep in mind that a back-to-back -back consistency point is not good, or rather it's very bad. Not if it happens every now and then, but if it is continuous for a longer period of time, then it is very likely that the writing of a consistency point takes longer than is good for you. Now to avoid back-to-back -back consistency points, you could start thinking of some of the following solutions. It, of course, it depends on what the real reasons are, so you might think of changing the workload. Or you could grow your aggregate, or maybe widen your stripe, so the larger your stripe, the more I.O. you will get. And you could also think of moving volumes to other aggregates to take away some of the load. And if you run hard disk drives, you might consider adding SSDs to create a flash pool, which will also maybe improve your performance, depending on the type of I.O. you have. Or you could go to all flash, which means you'd have SSDs only. Now let's do a demo on monitoring consistency point types. Uh, we will be using uh, two Linux VMs and one cluster. 